Hello everyone, welcome to our series on gases and today we're going to look at ideal gas law. So even though gases can vary tremendously in their chemical properties from helium to oxygen to argon, essentially all gases obey the same set of physical properties. What are these physical properties? They are pressure, volume, temperature and the amount. Many of the gas laws that we've seen so far, such as Charles Law, Boyle's Law, were all developed by the end of the 18th century via experimental observations. So what scientists realized was that relationships between pressure, volume and temperature of a sample of gas could be obtained, which would hold as a good approximation for all types of gases. To simplify the mathematics when modeling gases under different physical conditions, the concept of an ideal gas was constructed. So for a gas to be considered an ideal gas, it has to follow a number of assumptions. These assumptions are, the diameter of gas particles are negligible compared to the distance between them. In other words, there's such a vast um, distance between the gas particles that their size is just considered negligible. The average kinetic energy is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. So as Kelvin temperature increases, the kinetic energy of the gas increases. Gases are in constant straight line random motion. Gases are considered to have no attractive or repulsive forces between them. And all gas collisions are elastic. So whatever energy they have when they hit each other, when they leave one another, they leave with the same amount of energy. No energy is lost or gained. And these assumptions are known as kinetic molecular theory. So we're looking at molecular motion theory, if you like. Do ideal gases exist? No, they don't exist. But the purpose of an ideal gas is to make the mathematics easier. And what was found was that it's a very close approximation to real gases under moderate temperature and pressure, which is essentially atmospheric conditions, which is what we would do most of our experiments in atmospheric con conditions. Real gases do have attractive and repulsive forces between them. The diameter of the particles is not negligible compared to the distance between them, again, for real gases. Real gases are least like ideal gases when the temperature is low, so when it's cold and the pressure is high, because the particles are moving so slowly and they're very, very close together. That's a question that often comes up in the leaving start, is when they're least like an ideal gas, real gases, and when are they most like an ideal gas? Well, in the opposite, when the temperature is high, so they're nice and warm, and the pressure is very, very low, so in other words, they're very, very far apart. So what do we know so far? Let's choose one physical property, let's say volume. We've seen that the volume occupied by a gas can be related to the other physical properties, such as pressure, temperature, and amount. And these relationships are described as follows. We have the volume is equal to a constant divided by pressure when the amount and the temperature are held constant. And this is Boyle's law. We have volume is equal to a constant times the temperature when the amount and the pressure are held constant. This is Charles' law. And we've seen that volume is equal to a constant times the amount, number of moles, when the pressure and temperature are constant. This was Avogadro's law. Let's put all of these together and see what we come up with. What we find is that V, volume, is equal to OR, which is a proportionality constant. So it takes into account our KB, KC, and KA. And this is known as the universal gas constant. Times N, our number of moles, times T, our temperature, all divided by P. So you'll often see in this equation written as PV is equal to N or T. So pressure by volume is equal to the number of moles times the universal gas constant times T. So this is the first time in all of our gas equations that we've actually seen the number of moles in the equation. 
Previous to this, we were using Avogadro's law to convert the number of moles into a volume and then using the combined gas law. But now we can use the number of moles directly in the equation when we use the ideal gas law. In the ideal gas law, you have seen OR, which is our universal gas constant. If you have a look here, I show you there are a number of different universal gas constants. And all of these are dependent on the units of measure, for example, for your pressure and for your volume. The temperature will always be in Kelvin, as you can see, looking at the units here of OR. And moles will always be the same as well. Where they differ is when you're looking at your pressure and your volume, whether you're using pressure in atmospheres, whether you're using pressure in pascals or tor, whether you're looking at the units of measure for volume, whether it's liters or whether it's meters cubed, for example. Now, the pascal meters cubed, actually, when you put those together, you have newton per meter squared and you have meter cubed, which will cancel out to give you a newton meter, which is the same as a joule. So you're going to have to be very aware of your units of pressure and your units of volume so that you choose the correct universal gas constant for your equation. Two of the most popular ones for leaving certificate is this first one here, joules per kelvin per mole or liters atmospheres per kelvin per mole. However, if you have a look at this one, this first one here, it's the same. Remember, as I said, it's Pascal's meter cubed put together is also a joule. So you could also use this one too. But certainly the first and the second one would be the two most popular. So watch out for those when you're doing your equations. Let's have a look at an example now of a problem where you would have to use the ideal gas law. A volume of a propane cylinder used to operate a stove is 0 0.960 litres. So I would write down my volume and also the unit of measure, which is litres. So I'd have my V is equal to 0 0.960 litres. The surrounding atmospheric conditions are 25 degrees B. I've got to convert this to Kelvin, so it has to be in the absolute scale. I know how to do that by adding 273 to my degree value. So this will become 298 Kelvin. And I also have pressure, 0 0.98 atmospheres. So I'm going to leave that as atmospheric pressure. So how many moles of propane gas will remain when all liquid propane has vaporized and the temperature and pressure inside the cylinder are the same as atmospheric conditions? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for my number of moles. Well, there's an equation that we have for the number of moles and it's PV is equal to NRT. So I have a pressure, I have a volume. I'm looking for the number of moles. I have a temperature and I will choose wisely my universal gas constant. First of all, I'm going to transpose this equation so that I get my unknown on one side, which is my number of moles, and my knowns on the other side. I fill in then what I've got, my pressure in atmospheres, 0 0.98 atmospheres, my volume, 0 0.96 litres. Now, my universal gas constant should have all the units that I have been given in the problem. So I have, I'm going to choose 0 0.082 litres, atmospheres, and then mole Kelvin. So all the units that I have in there of atmospheres and litres and moles and Kelvin are all in that universal gas constant that proportionality constant. So I know I've chosen the correct one. And then don't forget to put in your temperature then, your 298 Kelvin. When you put all these values into your calculator, so 0.98 multiplied by 0.96 divided by 0 0.082, which is multiplied by 298 Kelvin, you should get the number of moles as 0.038 moles. I want to show you now, if I change the units of measure, how the answer should still come out the same, provided you choose the right proportionality constant or universal gas constant. Let's have a look at that. So again, I have the volume of a propane cylinder 
used to operate a stove is 9.6 by 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. This is my volume. The surrounding atmospheric conditions are 298 Kelvin and 99298.5 Newton per meter squared. I know my Kelvin is my temperature and my Newton per meter squared is my pressure. So I'm looking at different units of measure here. So I have my P, I have a V, I'm looking for my N, I must choose my R wisely, and my T. So I rearrange the equation, transpose it so that I get the number of moles which I'm looking for in its own, and put my knowns on the other side. So what is my pressure? It is 99298.5 newtons per meter squared times my volume, which is 9.60 by 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed, all divided by, now this is where you need to choose your universal gas constant. I have shown you up here how some of the conversions work. So you know you have a newton per meter squared and I have a meter cubed. So this will cancel with the per meter squared to leave you just with a meter up here. So I end up with a newton meter. And one newton meter is equal to a joule. So that's why I chose this one where I have a joule per Kelvin per mole. Alternatively, I could have used the other one that said Pascal meter cubed because this could be changed to Pascal and this here is meter cubed. And the same value is also given then for the universal gas constant. So you had a choice there. Anyway, when we fill them all in, so I have my pressure times my volume divided by my universal gas constant times my temperature. When you put all those into the calculator, you find you get exactly the same number of moles as we did before, that N is equal to 0 0.038 moles. So again, just watch your universal gas constant that you choose, depending what your pressure and your volume are. Have a go at this one yourselves. So pause the video, try it out, and remember, as always, the calculation breakdown will be on the following slide. So we have the volume of an oxygen cylinder used for a commercial fish tank is 2.025 litres. When the cylinder is empty at 29.2 degrees C, it has a pressure of 0 0.95 atmospheres. How many moles of oxygen gas remain in the cylinder? So again, when we're looking for moles, we know our equation is going to be PV is equal to nRT. So have a go at that and see how you get on. So the answer you should have got for that problem was N, the number of moles, is equal to 0 0.077 moles. If you didn't get that answer, the first thing I would say to you is to go back and check your universal gas constant, that you chose the one with litres, atmosphere per mole per Kelvin, and that you also changed your temperature into Kelvin as well, from degrees into Kelvin. They'd be the two main areas where you might go wrong. I want you to have a go at this one as well. It's exactly the same as the last one you looked at, only I've changed the units of measure for volume and also for pressure. So you should get the same answer as you did before. Just watch out for the universal gas constant that you decide to choose. So pause this video, have a go at it, and remember the answer is on the following slide. So the answer you should have gotten was the number of moles is equal to 0 0.077. If you didn't get that answer, I would go back. You most likely made an error in choosing your universal gas constant. So this one is your joules uh, per Kelvin per mole. So that's our ideal gas law. In the next presentation, we are going to look at diffusion. So thank you very much for joining me today.